I don't think I really need to tell you who Batman is. I mean, you probably know who he is. I mean, even if you've never read a comic or seen a movie in your life, chances are you've at least heard of Batman. So, you know, I think we can skip the whole introductory preamble. I mean, I could do the whole thing where I talk about how he was created in 1939 by Bob Kane and Bill Finger, and how he debuted in Detective Comics issue 27 to capitalize on Superman's new popularity, and how he proved popular enough to get his own comic series in 1940, and how he's one of the oldest known comic characters to ever exist. You know, I could talk about that, but everybody already knows that, so we can just move on. Now, when it comes to on-screen adaptations of Batman, if you asked anybody what the earliest version of an on-screen Batman was, chances are they would say the 1966 Adam West TV show. And I guess I can say that there is some merit to that. You know, that show uh, and the way it portrays the Batman mythos is incredibly iconic. And part of why it's as well known as it is is because of its campy tone mixed in with that 1960s feel. There's a very specific feeling to it, the kind that only really existed in this specific era of film and TV. But I digress, uh, because the Adam West version is not the first uh, televised version of Batman. The very first on-screen adaptation of the Batman character was in 1943 with a 15-episode long serial simply called Batman. Now, the reason I find this show very interesting um, is because of how little people actually talk about this small piece of Batman history, especially when compared to the Adam West show or any of the movies. Now, there is a very good reason for that. Um, the show is very much a product of its time. It is very dated, and I don't mean that just by virtue of it being a show from all the way back in the 1940s. And that's not me saying that, like, the 1966 show isn't dated, because it very much is. Uh, but the difference between the 66 show and the 43 serial is that the Adam West show is still fun to watch. The Batman 1943 serial is not very fun to sit through. Um, I mean, it's interesting to look back uh, from a historical perspective, um, but on its own, it's kind of lame. So today what I want to do is I want to go through the first episode, uh, I want to look at it and uh, see what makes it so interesting. Yeah, black and white, that's how far back we're going. Uh, actually, that reminds me, um, if we're going to watch a show from uh, this far back, uh, we should probably change a few things around here just to get into the mood. So, um, there we go, much better. High atop one of the hills which ring the teeming metropolis of Gotham City, a large house rears its bulk against the dark sky. Outwardly, there's nothing to distinguish this house from many others, but deep in the cavernous basements of this house, in a chamber hewn from the living rock of the mountain, is the strange, dimly lighted, mysteriously secret Bat's Cave, hidden headquarters of America's number one crime fighter, Batman. Batman? Yes. Batman, clad in the somber costume which has struck terror to the heart of many a swaggering denizen of the underworld. You, um, you okay there, Bruce? You're just kind of, um, just kind of sitting there. I get it, you know, I understand, you know, there just, there just isn't as much crime as there used to be, which, I, I mean, that's good, but, you know, with less crime, what's a Batman to do? A crushing blow against evil in which he will have the valuable aid of his young, two-fisted assistant, Robin the Boy Wonder. Oh shoot, there we go. So in this universe, the Batman is not a vigilante who stalks criminals at night and preys on the mentally ill. In this version, he's a government agent, a fully employed government agent who still feels the need to dress up like a bat. Different times, I guess. In fairness, I'm willing to cut the show a little slack with how it portrays the Batman world. I mean, the character itself was only like four years old at this point, so you know. I don't imagine there were that many people who were super concerned if this random show was going to remain faithful to the source material. And actually, on that point, uh, one of the things I think is really cool about the show is that uh, some of the things that they change for the show would actually become mainstay elements in the franchise. For example, this is the first time the Batcave makes any sort of appearance. It's not that fleshed out yet, though. It's just a desk and some chairs, so, you know. It's not even technically called the Batcave. It's called the Bats Cave, which, you know, kind of glad they changed it at some point. Batcave just kind of rolls off the tongue better. 
Another cool thing, this is the first time the character of Alfred is portrayed as the Wayne family butler, uh, because before this point, Alfred in the comics was actually just a detective who worked with Batman and Robin. After the serial, the character was reintroduced as Bruce Wayne's butler. That's pretty cool. So anyways, the story of the serial really starts when Bruce Wayne and Dick Grayson go to visit Bruce's girlfriend Linda at the Gotham City Foundation. You've had your usual busy day, I suppose. Yep, up at the crack of noon, a brisk walk to the corner and then the club for a rugged afternoon of gin rummy. Maybe you'll be too tired to go with me tomorrow to meet Uncle Martin. No, oh, no, I'll be right with you. Thanks. By the way, gotta love how openly they talk about their secret identities once they think they're alone, like when Linda leaves the room. You're liable to carry that masquerade too far. Think so? Yes, I do. Why don't you let her know who you really are instead of letting her think you're just a good for nothing playboy? Well, if she knows the Batman, she might worry. Like, guys, she's, she's just in the other room. Might wanna keep it down a bit. Besides, on account of our special assignment from Uncle Sam, our success depends on keeping our identity a secret. Yeah, I mean, it'd really suck if anybody found out I was Batman. You know, thank God I'm so good at keeping my identity a secret. So Linda asks Bruce and Dick to accompany her to meet her uncle, who's being released from prison. Unfortunately, they arrive a little too late, and her uncle is kidnapped by a bunch of criminals. Bruce and the gang try to catch up with them in their car, but the criminals are able to escape thanks to this very elaborate car disguise. Like, I want that. I don't know what I'd do with it, but <laughs> I want it. Now, I bet you're probably wondering who the main villain of this show is. I mean, Batman has one of the greatest rogues gallery in comic history, and even by 1943, he, they still had plenty of good options they could have gone with, you know, a Joker, Catwoman, Penguin, Two-Face. So, who do they go with? Uh... The main villain of the serial is one Dr. Daka. You know, that iconic Batman villain. <laughs> um... And the first time we meet him is uh, right after the little car chase scene, uh, where we get the first full uh, introduction to his, like, main lair. This was part of a foreign land transplanted bodily to America and known as Little Tokyo. Since a wise government rounded up the shifty-eyed Japs, it is... <laughs> I'm sorry. C can we hear that again, please? Since a wise government rounded up the shifty-eyed Japs, it has become virtually a ghost street... Um, okay, uh, I feel like I should give a little bit of context for this serial. So like I said, uh, this serial was released in 1943, around the middle of the year, um, which at that point was about a year and a half, two years, give or take, after the attack on Pearl Harbor and when the United States officially entered the Second World War. And if you didn't know, um, around this point, around the time that the country entered the war, um, as a result of this participation, um, there was a lot of, like, propaganda that was beginning to show up. You know, like you'd be going about your business doing whatever they did in the 1940s. Um, and then you'd just see like all these posters, all this like anti-Nazi, anti-Japanese stuff, just kind of like plastered all over the place, you know? And especially around this time, uh, you know, movie theaters were becoming more common. Uh, a lot more movies were being made, more people were going to theaters to see movies. Um, and I think as a result of their popularity, um, a, lot of, a lot of stuff from the war was kind of being like implemented into these cartoons and such. Like they would actually play like newsreels of recent events of the war before the movies. And um, this whole like anti-Nazi propaganda, it kind of it bled into, you know, these cartoons and movies. Um, the messages uh, that people wanted to get across about the war were incorporated into them. Um, just off the top of my head, there's this very infamous Disney cartoon uh, where Donald Duck has a nightmare that he's inducted into the Nazi regime, uh, complete with some very racist depictions of Japanese people. My point is that, like a good chunk of the media at this point, the Batman serial also had some of this propaganda injected into it. Uh, from what I understand, it was originally supposed to just be a fun little superhero series of shows. In the original version, the guy who plays the villain, Dr. Daka, J. Carol Nash, was supposed to play the Joker. Uh, in fact, there are still a few remnants of who he was going to play, because Daka's hideout is still in, a, in an amusement park. It's a very Joker place to hide out that they just didn't really change. 
But then I guess the guys who were making the show wanted to implement some of that American propaganda stuff. Uh, and so the villain was changed to a Japanese guy who wants to wipe out the U.S. I am Dr. Daka, humble servant of His Majesty Hirohito, heavenly ruler and prince of the rising sun. By divine destiny, my country shall destroy the democratic forces of evil in the United States to make way for the new order. An order that will bring about the liberation of the enslaved people of America. And by the way, yes, that is an American man playing a Japanese guy. Um, I don't know if that counts as cultural appropriation, but either way, uh, it makes me a little bit uncomfortable. <laughs> So Dr. Daka's plan is to steal this big supply of radium that he can use to power this ray gun he has that pretty much destroys whatever it touches. To do that, he kidnaps Linda's uncle, who knows the location of the radium supply, and he puts this brain implant in him that turns him into a controllable zombie. They get the location, and Daka sends his henchmen to go get the radium. Batman and Robin just so happen to notice them on the way, and they're like, all right, let's go stop these guys. Alfred, drive into that alley and put the top up. Yes, sir. Fun fact, that's uh, that's usually how people react to me when they see me for the first time. This experiment! Hey, turn the room. Wait, did they change costume in the car? Yeah, they did. Like, they drive into the alley, and the next time we see them, they're in costume. That, uh, that must have been a bit of an awkward costume change, you know? Like, two grown men trying to get into these full body suits in the back of a car. <laughs> so the bad guys get the radium and Batman and Robin try to catch them and take them out. The Batman, come on. <laughs> Gotta love that sped up footage. The Batman, come on. They escape to the roof and this is where we get our big fight scene for the episode, right? This is the climax. Wow, um, Batman's kind of getting his ass kicked. Yeah, he just, um, he just keeps getting hit. Wow, Batman kind of sucks. Doctor, the sinister Jap spy, believes Linda knows the whereabouts of the powerful radium gun. And what about Linda? Can she escape his evil clutches? Don't fail to see The Bat Cave, Chapter 2 of Batman at this theater next week. Next week? I, I can't wait until next week. God, that's such a cliffhanger. What's going to happen? All right, well, uh, I think that's about all the excitement uh, I can handle for one day. Um, I think you can see what, by now why a lot of people don't really talk about this show. You know, it's kind of boring, just a tiny bit racist, you know. And honestly, when it comes to Batman media as a whole, we just we just have so much more. Now we have, like, a crap load of movies, comics, a buttload of TV shows. So it's like, like, why would you want to go back to this? Uh, but that's about it, really. That's about it for this little adventure. So uh, thank you for joining me. Um, and before we wrap things up, uh, I kind of need to bring back the color to this place, so, uh, excuse me. Oh, shh.